Hi, welcome back to Food Technology Study Program, Department of Food Science and Technology, Faculty of Agricultural Engineering and Technology, IPB University. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We meet again with ITP 322 Food Safety and Sanitation course. Today is our sixth meeting. We are going to discuss about cleaning and cleaning agents. My name is Rati Dewanti Haryadi. I'm a professor in food microbiology at IBB University. In today's discussion, we are going to cover cleaning in food industry, cleaning compounds, the classification, principles of action, as well as the function of each cleaning compounds, cleaning methods, cleaning out of place, cleaning in place, foam cleaning, and gel cleaning, as well as several new mechanical cleaning. After completing this lecture, you are expected to be able to explain factors affecting cleaning performance, compare various cleaning compounds, describe surfactants and their principles of actions, and differentiate various cleaning methods. In food industries, cleaning aims to remove soil, dust, organic matters, or microorganisms from food processing facility using detergents or cleaners. Mechanical or physical cleaning is an important step in a sanitation program. Cleaning prior to disinfection increases disinfectant efficacy as well as increasing log reduction. Cleaning agents are usually used for various area and some can be used on a surface that come into contact with foods. We all know that cleaners may remove significant numbers of microorganisms, but that's not the design of the cleaners. The inactivation of microorganisms shall be done by sanitizing agents. If you want to remember what factors affecting cleaning performance, you may memorize using this term, tech wins. The first T is time. That shows the amount of time in which the cleaners came in contact with the service. A is for action, that's the physical force implemented on the surface during the cleaning. Concentration means the amount of cleaners used. And the second T stands for temperature, that is the energy or the heat that is used for the cleaning processes. W stands for water, that's the quality of water used for the cleaning purposes. And I stands for individual, meaning the worker or the person who is performing the cleanup operation. N is for nature, that's the composition and the characteristic of the soils that we have discussed before in lecture five. And S stands for surface, that determine the materials that is used as the surface that have to be cleaned. Okay, so what is the main function of cleaning compound? The main function of cleaning compounds is to lower the surface tension of water, therefore soils can be loosened and plussed away. Let me try to remind you the rule of thumbs for selecting a cleaning compound. Alkaline soils requires acid cleaners, while acid soils can be removed by alkaline cleaners. Other functions of cleaners is for sequestering, wetting, emulsifying and suspension, dissolving, saponification, dispersion, baptization, and rinsing. The ideal cleaning compound should be economical, non-toxic, non-corrosive, non-caking, non-dusting, easy to measure or meter, stable during storage, and easily and completely dissolve in water. There are several types of cleaning compounds. The first one is alkaline cleaning compounds. This also can be classified into further groups. 
The first one is strong alkaline cleaners, consisting of like sodium hydroxide, silicate, and then there is heavy duty alkaline cleaners, as well as mild alkaline cleaners. People also use chlorinated alkaline cleaners, that is alkaline cleaners added with hypochlorite to improve the peptidizing activity. The second group is acid cleaning compound, which is very effective in removing mineral deposits. Acid cleaning compounds can be divided into two types. The first one is strong acid cleaners, generally consist of inorganic acid, while mild acid cleaners generally comprise of organic acids. The third group is the synthetic detergent, which is very effective in lowering surface tension, promoting wetting of the particle, deflocculating and suspending soil particle. Detergent or surfactant soil effectively because they have two parts. The first part is the hydrophobic ends that binds to the soil and the second part is the hydrophilic ends that is water soluble that will bind to water having these two parts allows this detergent to bind to soil and also bind to water to form the cells therefore the dirt or the soil then can be removed detergent or surfactant can be further classified into anionic that is the negatively charged detergent. The positively charged detergent is called cationic. Non-ionic detergent does not have any charge and amphoteric detergent has different charge depending on the pH. This graph shows you the principles of action of a surfactant or detergent. A detergent enables water to wet the object thoroughly. The hydrophobic tails of the detergent dissolve in the grease. The water molecule attract the hydrophilic head of the detergent and lifting up the grease. And with the stirring, the grease forms tiny droplets forming an emulsion that allow the dirt to be removed by rinsing. These are some examples of anionic surfactant, sodium lauryl sulfate, alkyl sulfate, alkyl benzene, sulfonate. This group of surfactants generally react with hard water and form deposits and the solubility in cold water is low. The other group is the non-ionic surfactants. This detergent is a strong emulsifier and it is not affected by hard water and highly soluble in water therefore it's commonly used in liquid detergent. Some types of uh, non-ionic surfactant will become turbid when it is exposed to heat. These are some examples of non-ionic surfactants. In addition to its cleaning ability, cationic surfactant is generally having the antimicrobial characteristic. Therefore, it is also can be used as sanitizing agents. The last uh, type of detergents is the amphoteric surfactants or detergent. These surfactants can have a positive charge or negative charge depending on the pH. And here are some examples of amphoteric detergents. Cleaning agents is sometimes added with sequestrant or chelating agents. This additives is used to prevent hardness constituents and salts from depositing on the equipment surfaces by binding of the salts to their molecular structure or binding of other ions. Here are some examples of sequestrant or chelating agents. These tables summarize the types of cleaning compounds and its function. For example, alkaline cleaners generally can loosen soil through emulsification, saponification, and peptidization, while acid cleaners can control and remove mineral deposits. You can also see the function of detergent or surfactant, as well as complex phosphate. Next, we also see chelating compounds functioning to loose soil through emulsification, 
saponification and peptization, reformers that control and remove mineral deposits, and chlorine that are generally added to improve peptization activity, and the use of chlorine for this purpose usually does not provide sanitizing activity. There are five steps that are commonly done during cleaning and sanitizing because cleaning and sanitizing is usually done consecutively. The first step is dry cleaning. Second step is pre-rinsing, followed by detergent application, post-rinsing, and then sanitation. One method of cleaning is foam cleaning. Foam cleaning is the use of foam detergent for large surface area. It can cover an area of 25 meters square per minute and it is applied for 10 to 20 minutes, followed by rinsing. The advantage of this foam cleaning is easy to apply and it has a wide coverage surface area. Foam cleaning is applicable for cleaning of transportation equipment, ceilings, walls, pipelines, belt, and storage containers. The second cleaning method is gel cleaning. This method uses cleaning agents in the form of gel, thus when it is applied, it will tightly bind to the part. And when the part is moving, the gel has no risk of splashing to the environment. The gel cleaning requires high pressure portable unit and it's effective for food packaging equipment. The third method is called COP or clean out of place. For example, manual cleaning using three tank system. In this case, equipment is rinsed under tap water and then placed in the first tank containing detergent and soap to remove soils and then transferred to the second tank still containing detergent and sometimes with the help of brushing and then transferred to the third tank for disinfection. The Disinfection can be done with hot water, for example, or with chemical disinfectant. The last step is rinsing to get rid of the remaining of disinfectant and drain. This manual cleaning or COP is very useful for small equipment and usually you need an aid material such as uh, brushing, cloth, sponge, and water hose. Fourth method is called CIP or clean in place. This is the cleaning of large or difficult to disassemble equipment, so it has to be done in situ. The cleaning is a closed circuit system and applied in various food industries. The type of equipment commonly cleaned with CIP is pipes, tank, heat exchanger, centrifugal machines, and homogenizer. The typical cycles employed in CIP consist of preliminary rinse using hot or cold water to remove gross soil, detergent wash to remove soil, rinsing to remove the cleaning compounds, and then sanitizing to destroy residual microorganisms followed by final rinse when necessary. There are several designs of CIP. The first one is a single-use system which a uh, cleaning solution is only used once, thus minimize cross-contamination while optimizing the cleaning solution. Some of this unit can be portable. The second design is a reuse system in which cleaning compounds and cleaning solution is recovered and reused. Contamination of the cleaning compound is minimized by removing the soil during the pre-rinse cycles. This shows the basic parts of a reuse system for cleaning in place design. The third design is called multi-use systems, which combine single use and reuse systems. This is an automatically controlled program, which entails various combination of cleaning sequences involving circulation of water, alkaline cleaners, acid cleaners, and acidified rinses through the cleaning circuit for different time periods at varying temperature. The water, 
or solution for CIP require a turbulent flow. So for example, with a stainless steel pipe uh, having a diameter of 1 to 8 inches, a velocity of over 1.5 to 3 meters per second will result in a very turbulent, very good scoring effect. Or a flow velocity with a Reynolds number of over 4,000 and preferably a 10,000 which result in a fully turbulent flow. To obtain the desired Reynolds number, you could use this equation in which uh, Reynolds number equals to the density of the fluid times velocity of the flow rate and the pipe diameter divided by the viscosity of the products. Now let's discuss about several new mechanical cleaning methods. The first one is the ultrasound, which is the sound waves with a frequency above 20 kHz. This method is good for a cleaning of glass tubings, membranes and metals, glass, ceramic, and plastic surfaces. The ultrasound is even more effective when they are used in combination with heat, pressure, non-forming agents or enzymes. This diagram shows you how ultrasound cleaning is done. Equipment is soaked in a detergent tank and then ultrasonic generator will generate high frequency electrical energy causing transduction of this energy to form a mechanical vibration that form microscopic bubbles which will loosen the soil in the equipment. Another mechanical cleaning method is called ice pegging. Ice pick is formed by a stable ice slurry. This ice pegging is pumped through the range of pipes and it has been used to remove soft fouling in jam, ketchup, or fat production. This is a cleaning pick for an oil pipeline consisting of a wire brush and circles with a shaft and scours the interior of the pipeline. The advantage of this ice picking is uh, has a low environmental impact, but the disadvantage is these tools need to be cleaned with CIP to ensure proper cleaning. The other method is a pulsing flow in which uh, we impose a velocity pulse over a steady flow to increase the local shear rate and pressure at the deposit on the surface. This is a closed system where liquid is too viscous to achieve turbulent flow. Frequency and amplitudes of the pulse are important parameters in this method. Lastly is the two-phase system. The system has increased effectiveness of cleaning by permitting air to leak into vacuum of the system. The system also has advantage that is reduce the use of water, but there are more research needed for the implementation of this system. That's the end of my presentation for uh, topic six on cleaning and cleaning agents. Don't forget, we will have a group presentation assignment number two for next week. Please see detail in the assignment section and be sure to upload uh, the PowerPoint presentation 24 before next week's schedule at the latest. Thank you for your attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.